before you write any else, anything else that's new, I actually want you to go back in your book. You're going to have to go back a few pages, in fact. The spot I want you to go back to is where we did this. Do you remember this one? OK, all right, all right. So, so head back. I'd love you to go back to that spot in your books. It might be uh, six or seven pages. And you should have your own drawings or equivalent roughly of these. OK, um, once you get there, could I get you to just hold out your book for me? I'd just like to see what the page looks like. Just, yeah. Thank you, Vishaka. Very helpful. Thank you. That's great, Krishan. Um, once you get to that page, once you find it, can you hold it up? Levan, can you hold it? I just want to see it. Fantastic. Looks good. Thank you. Leah, excellent. Thank you, Hader. OK, it looks good. Very nice, uh, Arian. I can see it from back here. That's how good it is. All right, thank you. You can put your books down now. So here's what I'd like you to do. I want to get your brain back into this mode. But for this little bit, I'd want everything out of your hands um, and all eyes on the board. We're going to do a bit of an exploration back on this idea with some technology. It's why I asked you to get your laptops out. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Now, do you remember, in fact, I've got it right here. When I gave you these three different patterns, I asked you to do a bunch of things with them. I don't expect you to remember all those things, so that's why I've got this here. Um, I asked you to create a table for each of these up to, what does that mean? When you see s equals 6, what does that indicate for these particular things we're looking at? Yeah, Louise. Yeah, so we added on more and more shapes. That's why we chose the letter S. And then we wanted to work out how many matchsticks were required to make those shapes. Yep. Now, you created those tables. And I hope they're there on the page. Do you see them there? Yep. OK. Now, what I've done is I've recreated those tables. And I want to show you the particular way in which I've done it, which connects it to some of the knowledge we've learned over the last few days um, since we learned this. OK. So let me show you what that looks like for me. All right. Um, in fact, I'm just going to come over here and close the blind so you can see a little clearer. Can you all see my table over there on the left-hand side? Can you see it? I'm sorry, it's a bit small. I made it as um, whoop, made it as big as I could. Can you see it now? Is that a bit clearer? Let me just make sure I'm on the biggest mode I can. Yeah, I am. All right, so have a look over here. Now, mine is it's a vertical table, not a horizontal table. But do your numbers roughly match with mine? Can you look at your table and just compare? This is the very first one, OK? Um, it's just the three triangles, one after another, OK? One and three, two and six, three and nine, etc. Yeah? Is this ringing a bell? So this is what the numbers look like when you put them onto a Cartesian plane, something we've explored since then. Here's the next shape. Or here's a table that I got from the next shape. And here are the numbers that I get from each. Now, um, is anyone colorblind in the room, by the way? Anyone? I always have to ask, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Clements are both colorblind. So I'm much more conscious of like colorblindness. Um, it's usually men and boys, but anyway, that's a genetic thing. Um, you can see the difference then, all of you, between the blue and the green dots. So the green ones, can you see, there's one, three. Three represents the y coordinate. Um, there's two and then six. Uh, 3 and then 9 is just below 10. You get the idea, right? Now, look in your book. This is why I asked you to go back to that page. Do you remember, I, we gave a name to these two kinds of patterns. Do you remember what we called them? It starts with an L. Linear. Linear, right? Now, I made a big point about not explaining what that meant. But hopefully, since then, you've started to piece together, because you've heard that word, why we called them linear. If I just go down here, oh, this is what I want. You can see that what makes these patterns linear is I can join together all of the dots with what? A, a straight line. Now, the phrase straight line in mathematics is actually um, redundant. Because when you say line in mathematics, you only mean straight things. Um, as opposed to like if I gave you a piece of string and it was kind of wiggly wavy, and I'm like, here's a line of string. In mathematics, a line has to be, well, Straight, OK? So these are linear patterns because you can connect them with a straight line. OK. Now, do you remember we then had this last shape? Do you remember this guy? And I asked you to create your own version, right? And some of you, I remember Bar Baravi being ahead against the brick wall. Some of you really tried to find the pattern for this, OK? And it was difficult. Do you remember that? You're like, ah, how do I come up with this? Now, I want to show you a picture of why it was so difficult. Here, in red, is my table of values and the dots that you get from that pyramid shape that you, we created. Okay? Now, have a look carefully at those red dots. Can anyone tell me, and there's a bunch of 
plausible answers. What do you notice about those red dots? Jessica, what are you seeing? Yeah, it's not super obvious, but it does curve a little bit. It's not straight. Does anyone notice anything else? One of the things I did is I put a lot of dots here. I put more values in my table than I asked you guys to do. And the reason why is you can see you start on the green line and then you kind of leave the green line and then you even go past the blue line. Do you see that? And so that kind of, I did that to make the curve a little more obvious. Okay. Now, I want to show you what the issue here is. I'm going to remove all the blue and green stuff because this um, screen gets too busy and you can't see what's going on. So let's get rid of the blue and the green stuff. Okay. Here's what happens when you try to connect the red dots with a straight line. Here's what happens when you try. Now, this is a straight line that connects the first two dots. Can you see them right down the bottom? Okay. What's the problem? It doesn't, connect <laughs> it doesn't connect any of the other dots, right? It just has those two, and then it misses everything else. And you can try it with other ones. For example, I get rid of that one. If I connect the next two dots along, you get this guy. Okay? It joins those two, and it misses every single other dot. And I can just keep on doing this, right? Here's one that connects the last two dots. Um, it's steep enough to connect the last two that I've graphed, but it doesn't do any of the others. Okay? So this is why, and again, I hope this is there in your book. If it's not, please put it in. We call this a non-linear pattern, or a non-linear function is the fancy word. Uh, this is what really joins them up. And if I just sort of, um, I'm going to make this scale a little bit different here. Hopefully, this shows you the nature of that curve. It's a bit more obvious now. When I zoom out, if I ask you to make 20 or 30 of these shapes, you, number one, you need a lot of space on the floor for all the matchsticks, uh, and you need a lot of matchsticks. But can you see how obvious the curve is now? How it sort of like gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay. So now, yeah, Louise. Does it also get more steeper for every time? That's a great question. Does it get steeper for like forever? Well, one of the great things about technology, which you know, we're not asking you to graph. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Well, look at this, right? As I keep going and going and going, you're like, okay, well, I'm glad, I'm glad Mr. We didn't ask us to do this number of matchsticks, or I don't own this number of matchsticks. But you can see, it just gets steeper and steeper forever, which is kind of weird. Anyway. Do they get steeper forever because um, the axes have unlimited um, length? Yeah, so if you go back to, do they get steeper forever because the axes have unlimited length. If you go back to where you did this, do you remember this? When we were talking about the Cartesian plane, right? And what do we put on the ends of the Cartesian plane? Arrows. We put arrows, which you told me indicates that they go on forever. Right, exactly. Vishaka. Um, that other thing? This one? Would I call this a line? Now, in mathematics, because line has a specific meaning, which means straight, um, I would not call this a line. In fact, in some ways, I call it the opposite of a line, which is why we call them nonlinear patterns. Okay? And in fact, that's, that's the heading I'd like you to make, and I'll write it up in a second. Um, linear and nonlinear patterns. That's the heading I'd like you to make. Louise? Um, I mean, like, but if you zoomed out, the whole way to end it up being straight. And then when it continues going, does it go like to the left so it makes like a curved up? Oh wow, what a great question. Okay. Uh, to give you the short answers to that, it never goes straight. It does look kind of like it's straight, but that's because our eyes have trouble telling the mind differences. As to the other side, like what happens over here, that's actually a bit of a spoiler for the exercise you're about to do. So I will show you the answer by the end of the lesson.